Howdy guys. KDE just released version 6.1 of its Plasma desktop. It's brand new and it's hip. And if you asked a KDE user, they would tell you that Plasma version 6 was a big deal. So let's have at it. I've seen quite a few screenshots of this desktop and this background. Let's breeze through the welcome screens on the live CD. KDE has been on my radar to try out for a while. I used to be a bit of a fanboy back when it was in version three. So this will be interesting. Now KDE Neon is basically vanilla KDE released by the KDE team itself. So no Ubuntu or Arch developers have got their grubby hands on it. Zero customizations. I forgot about these little animated cursor icons. They look so KDE. It's always been a bit confusing to me why so many distros use GNOME as their base and not KDE. GNOME tends to fade into the background for me, while KDE is the environment you spend hours customizing. By the way, guys, if you love Linux or KDE and more of this sort of content, don't forget to hit subscribe. As the welcome screens pop open yet again, and after that, a strangely blank installation screen. So by the magic of editing, we find ourselves at the completed install. So let's restart. The login screen looks very nice. I'm a sucker for some slick animations. So let's begin with Dolphin, the file browser. Straight off the bat, it feels like there will be lots of options for customizing how it works. Clicking around, there are a lot of context menus with adjustments. The right click menu is very reminiscent of Windows. I'm very used to creating files and folders via right click. And check out these view options. And the folder properties dialog. Now, this is something I have found quite useful in the past especially the permissions tab. Look away if you're a GNOME user. I could get used to this. How many times have you been browsing through your files and then just thought, I wish I could open a terminal here? KDE has you covered. We haven't even gone into the Dolphin Preferences screens. Now, sorry if I keep pointing out things that are probably second nature to veteran KDE users, but to me, this is all new and very useful. KDE somehow manages to look simple, but hide a lot of variations under the hood. Righto. Let's look at the wallpaper options KD Plasma gives us. There is a nice little selection, but I really wish there were a couple more of the illustrated ones, like the orange tree one that they use everywhere. I do know that 6.1 was meant to come with an illustrated wallpaper in the same style called Reef. And as luck would have it, I have it prepared from earlier. This is interesting. You get to essentially pick a folder to act as your desktop. So basically you can mirror something like your downloads folder and have it always visible as the desktop. We are just scratching the surface with the changes KDE lets you do to your desktop. Now this is new to Plasma 6.1. It's sort of a preview of the panel customization. It might be a tad extreme, but it looks cool. So you get to modify the panel size and appearance, position and so on.
So the system settings in KDE Plasma are very, very extensive. Look at the size of this list. There's heaps of setting changes you can make without having to resort to the terminal or install a separate extension. I think with a lot of other non-KDE environments, things can seem a bit fragmented. You have one widget for sound, another for date and time, and then you need to drop into a terminal to create a new user. KDE makes it more central, and I like that. It can maybe possibly be a bit overwhelming to have so many settings available to you, but if you know what you're doing, it is very powerful. Okay, we found it, dark mode. I'm super excited to try out all the additional theme customization options here. And remember, these are all out of the box, no add-ons needed. I really love the ability to install a new theme straight from this window. I wonder if it is a bit of a double-edged sword as well, like everything is super powerful and custom. But with all that comes inconsistencies and probably a few bugs. I've yet to see anything major though. We even have cursor themes and sounds as well. And you can customize your login screen. Let's move on to the application menu. It seems nicely categorized. I keep having to remind myself that everything I'm looking at is just KDE by the KDE team and not really a fully packaged distro. The application search works quite well too. It's not just looking at keywords in the title. So for example, I'm searching development and it's giving me relevant apps. So there's some smarts built in. And of course the menu itself is very customizable. So KDE also comes with a menu editor, which is wild to think about, considering most environments just stop at a config file or some XML. This should let us rename and move the menu items around to be exactly what we want, or maybe not. Wait, is there a way to change the stacking of the window here? Oh my God, of course there is. There's a config button for that. There's a config button for everything. Now, while I am pretty impressed at these sorts of tools, I can see how it might get in the way with actually getting other work done. I know I get distracted with making things perfect and might just put my actual paying work on the back burner while I get my applications menu just perfect. So KDE Software Center is called Discover, firstly, great name, and it really looks like the full package. The categories and other elements on the sidebar work really well. The package list looks clear and attractive. Everything looks uncluttered, and they have made maximum use of space and white space. The categories are also multi-leveled, so you can drill down into very specific types of apps you are looking for. All right, let's move on to Kate, which is technically a text editor, but in reality is a full-blown IDE. I have tried and used Kate before this. Outside of KDE, it's pretty powerful and probably deserves its own standalone review. It has language-specific syntax highlighting, LSP support, color schemes, as well as Git integration. Honestly, you can call it the cherry on top moment of this run through. So let's summarize. I love KDE Plasma. There's just so much to unravel and customize, and that, in my opinion, is the best part of desktop Linux. 
I feel like a lot of this video might well be a case of no user tries KDE. I suspect a lot of what has impressed me today is probably normal for a KDE user. But KDE Plasma and KDE Neon feels a lot more polished than any version of KDE that I've tried before. KDE was always more customizable than GNOME, that was just its thing, but in the past you could see the stitching almost. Plasma 6 6.1 even just feels more polished though. I can see myself getting back into KDE and using it full time. In fact, I'm going to do just that over the weekend. Okay guys, hope that was enjoyable for you as much as it was for me. Please like and subscribe if you want more Linux related content. Until next time, 